Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first video, hi, I'm Elena, and this is The Organized Money, where we talk about planning life and managing money. In today's video, we are going to get into home planning. Today is day 12 of our How to Plan Your Life series, and I wanted to share with you my home planner setup. I'm moving back into the eight and a half by 11 planner, and so this particular planner has been franken planned into seven in different sections. Now that I'm back into my full size planner, I am taking full advantage of using inserts again. In my home section, I do have my full on calendar and I also have some inserts in the very front of the planner. I'm gonna walk you through all of the inserts and how I use my calendar. When you flip to my home section, I do have a dashboard here. This dashboard is from Tool and I have been using the side dashboards and and top dashboards in order to keep my planner organized. So currently my side tabs are my planner categories and my top tabs are subsections that I frequently visit within those categories. So once you get past the dashboard, the very first page that you're going to see is my cleaning routine. Each day of the week, I like to work in two rooms within my house. Usually those two rooms are very near to each other on the day that I am cleaning them. So for instance, on Monday, I am cleaning my living room and my half bath. The half bath is the guest bathroom that's within my living room. That way I can stay within this section of the house, bring all the supplies that I need, and I won't wear myself out trying to go from room to room cleaning. And I do that on every single day of the week, I will do my living room and my bath and then kitchen and laundry room, which are very near to each other. I'll do the kids bathroom and then the kids bedroom. And then on one day, I will clean one of the kids bedrooms. And then on the other day, I will do another bedroom. But all of the rooms are really close to one another. And this helps me not to wear myself out. And I will only do two rooms on a single day. So every day of the week, I am cleaning two different rooms in the house, and then on Sunday, I am only doing the car. Now, I have all of these written down as if I am cleaning all of them by myself. However, most times, I am going to have some help especially on Saturday. Saturday is considered a family cleaning day. So a lot of times my husband will be helping and I will be assigning different things for the kids to do as well. But having this routine helps me to make sure that I am not neglecting any area of my house. I also have a little key at the top telling me which color code works for which room. Now, I didn't have enough colors for every single room in my house. However, I did pick the same color for rooms that I know I would not confuse. So for instance, on Tuesday, I am cleaning the kitchen and that color is yellow. Well, I know that I don't have an oven in my bedroom, so I know that Tuesday would be for the kitchen. And then on Saturday, I'm using the same color of yellow, but I know that I'm not changing beds in my kitchen, so I know that this color means the bedroom. And the color code is just to make it a little bit easier Year for me to quickly see which room I'm working in on a particular day. And then I also have a daily section. So in my daily section, this is my 15 minute morning cleanup. You guys know I have a morning routine and it's at the very front of my planner. And as you can see, I have clean for 15 minutes under this morning routine. Well, if I ever wanted to know what I was cleaning at this time, I would just flip to my home section and look at the daily tab. And then I would know that these are the items that I am cleaning within the 15 minutes that I have allotted in my morning routine. So like I said, this is a great way for me to stay on top of everything in my house. It makes sure that I won't neglect any area of my house. And then if I do skip a day, then I know what I have missed. After you get past my cleaning routine, the very next section is my organization section. I have a couple of things going on in this section. The very first thing is my project. So as you guys know, under my goal section, I do have to complete five house projects for 2021. So I have already printed out five 
project planner sheets so that I can list out all of the projects that I want to do for 2021. And I've already started working on the very first project that we're going to do for 2021, and that is renovating the laundry room. So my first step whenever I am working on a project in our house is to find some inspiration of what I wanna do for that project. I knew I wanted to renovate the laundry room, but I wasn't really quite sure what I wanted to look like. So of course I went to Pinterest and I found a picture that kind of helped me get inspired. So once I found this picture, I printed it out on sticker paper, cut it out, and then I just stuck it on this sheet so that I could remember exactly what I wanted the laundry room to look like. The next thing that I did is just added some additional steps. Um, the first thing that we needed to do was hire a contractor. We actually just found a contractor. So I actually can cross that off, but then everything else, once we meet with the contractor and decide on the different tasks and all of the things that we need to do, the items needed, and and we start timing out the deadline of when everything is going to be completed, then I will fill in these areas. But I like to have a sheet that's dedicated for home projects, then that way I'm not writing in different notebooks, it's not all over the place. I have one spot that I can look and see everything that I need for a particular project. And even when I write in the items needed, a lot of times I will write in that item and write the price of that particular item so that I can kind of keep track of how much this is going to cost me and usually I will create a sinking fund on my capital in order to pay for all of my home projects. So once we meet with the contractor and I come up with a preliminary budget I will write all of that down and I will write down the items that we need and then I will create the sinking fund in capital and keep track of how much we are spending and how much we are saving toward this project. Project. So I have all five sheets printed out and ready to go. And of course, if we're able to get to more projects than that, that would be great. I will just add more sheets as needed. The very next page under my home organization section is my file cabinet cheat sheet. So this is a cheat sheet that I created because with our file cabinet, I don't keep a bunch of things in our file cabinet. I don't like to store a lot of paper. A lot of times if paper comes into my house, I'm trying to get rid of it as quickly as possible because I like everything to be as decluttered and only have what we need. But these are the areas that we absolutely need to keep and I wanted to have a spot in my planner where I can kind of jot that down and remember what needs to be in that file cabinet. So we have five sections and the very first one is for our home and our car. Under the home and car folder, we have our auto insurance policy, home insurance policy, home and auto maintenance, and home projects. So any receipts that are allocated for the home project, like we were talking about the laundry room um, renovation that we are going to do next year. Anytime I have receipts, we have purchased different things. When I get the washer and dryer, I will keep track of any home project that we have done and put that in this particular folder. And I will do the same thing anytime we have any upcoming repairs or maintenance. I will just keep track of all of that so that I can kind of stay on top of how much we're spending in this particular area for the year. This really helps with sinking funds. If you've ever been wondering, how do I know how much to save for auto maintenance? You can look at what you spent in the previous year under auto maintenance or home maintenance and then that can help you with setting up a sinking fund knowing how much you spent and saving for the future year so those are the things that I'm keeping under home and car the very next section is our taxes so for our taxes I'm going to keep a printout of the current year the last year and the previous year before that I do have electronic copies up to seven years on my computer, but I do keep printed copies in my file cabinet of the current year, last year, and previous year, just in case I need to quickly glance at them. The next area is under banks. In our banking folders, I do have bank account statements. I am keeping track of credit card statements and any loan statements that we may have. And I do keep a folder for each account. So, you know, we have five bank accounts. I have my spending account, 
account, bill account, my business account, short-term savings account, and long-term savings account. So with each one of those, I do keep track of my statements. I do file them as a PDF and I will print them from time to time. And this also helps me for financial planning to make sure I'm staying on top of different things. And after a while, you can't print a bank statement from the bank because it's archived. So it's great to kind of keep track of your own statements and have a system for um, filing them. The next area that I have is our health section. And in this section, I do have our health insurance policies, our dental policies and the explanation of benefits. We do pay out of pocket for our health insurance. So every single year, me and my husband have to evaluate our health insurance, make sure that it's still working for us and pick a good policy for our family. Whenever we get our annual policy, I do keep track and I keep a folder of that. And I can quickly look online for any doctors to make sure that they are within our plan. And the very last section in my file cabinet is a section called family. Under this section, I am keeping track of any real important documents, social security cards, birth certificates. I have passports in there and I have a file folder for each family member. So I will have one for me, my husband and our kids. And like under our kids, I might keep track of their report cards or anything from their school that I feel like is super important and I don't want to lose it. It will go in this folder. And that is it for my file cabinet cheat sheet. And I will review everything that's within my file cabinet every single year, just to make sure that I am staying on top of everything and that everything that's in there is current. And I'm actually do to do this really, really soon. So that's why I printed it and put it in here. The very next page in here is one that I actually printed offline. I will put this page in the description box below, but this is a travel checklist that I printed out. It's from Smarter Travel and basically it is a pre-trip checklist. And it's just a list that you'll need if you're going to travel anytime soon. And you can even add more things under each category which is really why I liked it because all of the other ones I saw, they had the pre-printed columns, but they didn't have an area where you could actually add stuff. And I know that I would need this, but having this pre-trip checklist is a great way to kind of get organized for any upcoming trips. Unfortunately, I won't need this this year. I usually use it anytime that we are going on vacation, which we usually leave for Christmas, but you know, 2020. So we aren't going anywhere this year, but I do have it printed out and I just keep it in here and hopefully next year I will be able to use it. But I just love the categories that they have on here. They have home and pets, and finances and health, your itinerary and your flight. And it's just really, really quick and easy for you to be able to go through everything, check it off, and then you can file this one away and print a new one went for your next trip. And this is the last page that I have within my my organization section of my home planner. The very next section is my family section. So under my family section, I do have my weekly meal plan inserts. And every single week, I will just pull one of these. I have four in here for the four weeks that are coming up. And I will just keep it in here until I meal plan, which me and my husband will usually sit down and meal plan on a Sunday. And we will just kind of write out everything that we want to eat for the week. So I just keep it in my family section until I'm ready to pull it over to my calendar section. But the very next page that I have under the family section is our family meeting structure. So we meet as a family weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. And under weekly, it is a very, very light session because it's usually me and my husband, we're sitting down on a Sunday and we will quickly kind of talk to each other about events, any appointments that we have coming up. We will meal plan and use this sheet. And we will also lightly go over our weekly budget and our weekly cleaning schedule. Cause like I said, he does help me with the cleaning and anytime he wants to purchase anything or we want to purchase things as a family, we'll just talk it over just to make sure that we are on the same page. Under our 
monthly section, we will once again talk about events that are coming up for the month, any appointments that either one of us may have. We will also do meal planning for the month and we will talk about our monthly budget, home projects, and home organization projects. So like we're working on our laundry renovation next, he will normally talk to the contractor and then we will discuss the overall budget, the overall design of the laundry room and make sure that it kind of fits both of our needs. Quarterly, we will meet and talk about any quarterly cleaning we need to do, any sinking funds that we need to set up because remember we set up our sinking funds on a quarterly basis and I only have four sinking funds at any given time. So this is the time where we may talk about the next three months, what's coming up and what we need to set up sinking funds for. And then we will also discuss again, any upcoming home projects, any upcoming organization projects. And then annually, we will talk about events that we wanna do in the next year. We will do our annual budget review. We will talk about our taxes review our health insurance. Remember we pay out of pocket for health insurance. So we're talking about the policy at the time, auto insurance and any projects that we may want to do in the next year. But having this family meeting structure is a great way to kind of help us stay on top of the different things that we need to do as a family. You know, life gets crazy, crazy, crazy. And when it does, it's very easy to kind of forget about all the different things that you have planned for as a family and just kind of get caught up in the day-to-day -day things that you have to do. So we do set aside certain days where we will meet. Every single Sunday is our weekly meeting and then we will do a monthly meeting usually on the like the last Friday of the month and then we will set dates for the quarterly meeting and the annual meeting. So I like to have this sheet in here just in case we are getting into a family meeting and I can just quickly make sure that we have looked at everything that we're supposed to discuss. The very next page in our family section of the home planner is family appointments. So I have these family appointment sheets. This is a download from my shop and I have it for all four family members. So as you can see, I have my name, my husband's name, and then I have both of my kids. And then I just took a colorful box and I just added the name at the top. And I'm the only one that has upcoming appointments in January. I am getting my wisdom teeth pulled in January. So I have a six month cleaning scheduled in January and then I have my wisdom teeth surgery scheduled in January. But as family appointments come up, as we do different things, I will kind of jot them down on here. So I have my six month dentist cleaning coming up, but my husband needs to still schedule his and then I have to schedule both of the kids to get there. And then when we also do um, doctor's checkups and everything else, it will go on this sheet. So then if I am trying to remember or think about the last time I had an appointment or one of my family members had an appointment, I can come to this sheet and make sure that we are staying on top of that. And I like this sheet because you can just list out any appointments here and then I can also add any notes of anything that may have happened or I need to schedule down here. So I have those four sheets there for the year and then it goes into my actual calendar. For my home planner, I am using the Stay Wild Dashboard Happy Planner. This is a 12 month planner and it is the dashboard layout. I really love the dashboard layout so much because I am currently using it for my business planner and I still wanted to use it for my home planner as well. I was trying to force myself into using the vertical style planner just so I could have a different type of planner but then I was like, no, why do that when you know you are a functional planner? This system just works for you, so just go with it. So I have two of these type, two of these planners, but one is for business and one is for my home. So with this planner, I have set up a couple of things. I have set up my future planning section, and that is just where I have circled in some birthdays and anniversaries, just so I can quickly glance and see that there is a birthday on that day. For the most part, I do know them all by heart. I have a pretty small family, so I know them all by heart, 
um, but having it quickly circled just helps me to jog my memory just in case I need it. I also have this future planning section. I believe I'm going to do the same thing and write in birthdays and keep track of future appointments here, but I wasn't 100% sure that that's what I was going to do with it, so I have left it blank for now. After that, you do have a monthly goals section and important dates section. I am probably going to decorate this page as well once we have solidified our goals for the month when we're starting home projects, what organization project I may want to do, any events that are coming up in January, I will add all of that here. And that will probably be after our monthly meeting because like I said, I meet with my husband and our family on a monthly basis. And then once we talk to the girls and we talk about events and talk about appointments, I will decorate this page and add everything here. The next page I have already started decorating and that's because I do the exact same thing every single month but basically this is my monthly spread for my home planner and I am kind of keeping track of everything that's going to go on in the home we have weekly meetings on Sunday and I know during that weekly meeting we are going to talk about our meal plan so I have added stickers for meal planning already throughout the entire month on a Sunday. And I've also added my brother's birthday and my daughter's birthday here. Added my dentist appointment because I told you I'm getting my annual cleaning here. Wisdom teeth surgery on here. And so I've already added that. I also added the trash days. And I already have added in certain meals that I know we will have. Normally on Tuesdays, we do have tacos. It's just a family favorite. It's something that we all really truly enjoy. So I saw these taco night stickers within the household sticker book from Happy Planner and I thought that they were so cute I just had to use them. So I have added taco night here. I mean if we don't eat tacos is absolutely fine. I could just take them out or cross it out and write in what we actually had but I'm pretty sure we will have tacos because we've had tacos every Tuesday, probably since the pandemic started, like in March. And then on Saturday, we normally eat takeout, so I have added that here as well. But as different things come up for the house or for the family, I will just jot them all down here. The other thing that I will do is add the projects that we're currently working on on the sidebar and probably add a section for my next month. You guys know with all of my monthly calendars, I always have a section for next month on my side bar because that kind of helps me plan ahead. And that is it for the monthly side of the calendar. Once you get into my weeks, I have broken down my weeks into several sections. I have what I am organizing for the week, what I need to purchase for the house, anything that I need to do. I have my grocery list here, meals, and then I will add in all of my to-dos during the week. On this side here, I usually will just add a quote down here. And so this week's quote will be, home is where our story begins. So now that I am back in the big happy planner, I, as y'all can see, I am super excited to start printing out as many downloads as I possibly can and add them to my planner. So I know that this section is probably a work in progress as I kind of go throughout my month as I am planning as different things is coming up. I am sure I'm going to add more into this planner, but for now, this is where we are with my home planner and I am really loving how it is coming together. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you have a home planner, you have different sections than I do, let me know in the comments what sections that you have in your planner. I would love to get some ideas from you guys because like I said my planner is a constant work in progress and I'm always looking for different things that I could possibly add to help me stay even more organized. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Until next time keep organizing your life so that you can achieve your dreams. Bye guys.